Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sabiha. Are you with me? Samira. How are you? Okay, are you? I'm good. So you passed your MRCOG part three. Congratulations. And, and, and you attended my course. You know me. This is Dr. Samira Khan. I have, I'm conducting part two, part three MRCOG and MRCPI OSCE courses. Uh, <clears throat> so um, because I want to know your experience. Um, this is like in 2022 only you passed the exam, isn't it? You yeah, I passed it. my exam in February 2022 exam. Yeah. Because I, I passed my return in 2018, uh, August, mm -hmm. September. And after that, I was waiting for, uh, waiting for the, no, 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 2019, I think. Yeah, 19, you passed here. Yeah, uh, September, I passed my return. Hmm. And since that time, I'm waiting to attend the... Because of COVID, there were delays and, and COVID, at last... Was delayed. Yes. Yeah, at last I got the chance and Alhamdulillah, I passed my first attempt. Yeah, this is this is good. And people want to know the candidates, the students who are going for, especially for the for the February um, attempt on 2023. And, and the people who have no idea, um, they never attended any course or they, they never entered any exam before, especially these people, they want to know your experience. First of all, tell me the the I heard that all the scenarios are from the recalls. Is that true? Yeah, that actually, Samira, the 80% of the exam was from the recall exam. Hmm. Only few of the stations which were in the uh, gyne list, hmm. somehow they were uh, new. Uh, structure discussion. But Sabiha, gyne list is not a, a new, uh, but they maybe changed the scenarios. But the gyne list is, is itself. Uh, I mean, is actually, my gyne list, for me, I found it all the complicated cases in the gyne list. Hmm. Uh, well, I would say that because I did not practice a lot. Mm -hmm. And I attended only, I think, the one course. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I did only the mock with you only. Hmm. So for me, I... I uh, so you are saying in the gyne list, the scenarios something. were new. This was the only thing which, which you found it. Yeah, complicated a little, a little bit maybe. yeah maybe I, I feel that maybe i did not practice yeah. uh, that much that otherwise i found the exam was most of the scenarios were repeating uh, since maybe few, few years mm -hmm. and there was nothing new actually so if we do last uh, four or five year recalls will will it be enough well, yes, it will be enough if you mm. actually exam as a trick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found uh, some people they are saying, when we pass a return exam, I heard that some are saying, oh, you pass a return exam now, part three is uh, just the drama and you don't need any uh, knowledge to revise and just communication. Yes, it is, it is the exam of communication, but I, I would say uh, you need the knowledge Mm -hmm. You have to repeat your written uh, knowledge mm. because if you don't know uh, uh, the background knowledge about the subject, how you will counsel the patient? That's true. And this is, this is what I was discussion. being told when I passed my theory that now you pass the theory, you know everything. <laughs> no, that is not true. I, I needed to revise, but I feel my, uh, I have to tell you, I feel my first OSCE because uh, it, at that time you have to appear immediately it was like few weeks after you passed oh, yeah. the theory and and i had to travel to uk so uh, and the perception that because i passed the theory i know the knowledge and i just need to concentrate on my communication at that time there were no telegram groups in 2015 or maybe i didn't know we didn't practice recalls to tell you the truth but now this is so um it's great that um recall questions are available uh, everywhere and if you pass like 90 percent and you have done these recalls and you know the questions are familiar scenarios are familiar but so at least you can do like 90 percent yeah, 80, 80 to 90 percent yeah, yeah. you are right samira actually nowadays hmm. everywhere there are so many groups they are practicing recalls hmm. there are some free classes going on here and there mm -hmm. there are so many videos on the youtube yeah 
and they are also practicing the recalls hmm. so if you if you concentrate and you, and you give some uh, decent time to revise and to practice and you have the background knowledge and you you are working as well this is also the benefit if you are working mm-hmm. and you are doing cl- your clinical practice yes i think it will be it, it will give you a confidence, the confidence. The mm-hmm. yeah and the examiner will know that y- y- you are working, practically yeah. working or you are, or you are practically you are working not. yeah yeah they for will me, know. i i for me this was the i i got the benefit of working because mm-hmm. uh i did not remember most of the uh, like uh, history template and all hmm. i don't remember at the time when i was talking to the patient hmm somehow and the second uh, thing but I you just, know it it doesn't it, mean that you don't have to practice because it was uh, stuck to your mind the template because we were doing it a, a lot so it, it it comes to you automatically maybe so you don't need yes. to remember it at that yes. time yeah. if you if you stuck if you if you memorize the template hmm. and if you stuck to the template then it seems in front of the patient that you are you are memorizing something you are not you are trying to, to you are trying to remember yes. at that time so it should be like uh, at the tip of your mouth okay, yes, and yes. it will come only if you practice it many times so it it's a matter of practice you should have a study partner you practice with her but every person has an individual problem either you you are practicing well with uh, a lot repeatedly or either you are doing regular clinics and you are in talking to the patient so while because i was doing uh, my clinic but i was doing my clinic in in a middle east country they were not following their protocols so it's a, it's different like uh, we were not having emergency course, contraception course, yeah. so but so you need to have like to to uh, to practice with your study partner and maybe a mentor which is better because yeah, yeah, you yeah, might yeah. you might be having some in your individual problem which your mentor can recognize that okay you are having this problem and you have to correct it like this and this and this because in our clinic where wherever we are working we might not be following that british protocol yes, yes, sir. i agree with you i agree totally agree so the first question that i just like for three four each you have 14 scenarios so um if you can remember uh, february 2022 the first scenario was like teaching ctg if we can talk two minutes about each scenario and you give us advices what you have done in this teaching scenario yes sure yes so the first was teaching ctg actually first scenario there was uh, there was they given the uh situation that uh, i have a uh, foundation year one uh, trainee with me and he i am the on call and he comes to me that he received a call from a midwifery clinic mm-hmm. a midwifery clinic somewhere mm-hmm. uh, and he received the call that there is a primary gravida mm-hmm. and she is 38 weeks mhm and she is in active labor 4 cm mm-hmm. and i remember in that when there is meconium okay okay and this midwifery clinic has a facility of ctg and this send the ctg also to the mm-hmm. to my train then the trainee bring the ctg and he is asking me what should i answer because this is the first day mm-hmm. of her or the first week uh in in uh, in the department uh, our uh, in the department in the labor ward okay. so he came to me and he said what should i answer and what does it mean meconium and what this ctg is showing is so what we are we have to do now that ctg so, was completely normal actually yeah it was a normal ctg okay yeah it was normal it, ctg so i just asked you needed to just teach then yeah. how the normal then, ctg then, looks like yeah. you know what happened when this this scenario came to me and the trainee came to me uh, examiner was the as a trainee a foundation year trainee hmm. okay then when he came to me and he uh, i just asked simple some question 
the whether the you 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 have to take the full history you took the history mm -hmm. that whether this patient uh, is a low risk mm -hmm. patient whether any surgical mm -hmm. or medical history is having or mm -hmm. how many weeks pregnant it's mm -hmm. spontaneous labor started or there is any any other intervention any like small simple history of the obstetric patient mm -hmm. who is in labor you need only simple history how many weeks pregnant any medical surgical uh, illness mm -hmm. she's having and uh, blood group and something what so i asked where well, you asked he told me all and then uh, on the ctg then i i came to the ctg immediately and mm -hmm. i asked would you like me to read the ctg for you mm -hmm. do you know about the ctg he said no this is my my uh, first mm -hmm. time and uh, i said okay if i teach you ct you would you like me to teach you how we read the ctg he said it will be great if you teach me so it i now you know it, that this yeah. is the station is about ctg uh, teaching mm -hmm. yeah yeah then i i i go through the uh, what we learn and what we mm -hmm. practice how to teach the ctg and the like, teaching uh, uh, tricks also of course i i start from that that doctor c bravado like we are teaching we have we got the template and all mm. about the ct teaching I template all, yes the yeah, mm. teaching template i did all with that uh, uh, training and in the meanwhile i am asking do you understand can you repeat it for me like yes um, the template the, the, the tips and the, the tricks of the teaching problem. template yeah. yes then uh, and after that uh, i ask him uh i will give you on other ctgs and if you would like to uh ask the abnormal some of the uh, because we did today normal ctg and yeah. in the next next you some of the abnormalities in the ctg as well and yeah. so uh, you offered her uh, you offered her that uh, to come back yes. uh, again and if she come has back. any question yeah. and if she has any yeah. another ctg which is exactly. abnormal ctg exactly. so she can come and discuss uh, this with so you yeah. you offer her uh, support uh, yeah, that in the next i will inform, i will tell you and then i will uh, i will inform, i will told her about that patient also mm -hmm. what we are discussing that because she is as a I mean, Meconia. Then we will immediately transfer the the patient to the labor ward, our hospital, and uh, we will. Uh, this patient needs continuous CTG monitoring because it's mm -hmm. uh, having meconia now. Yeah. So you talked about CTG and you talked about the management in brief also and the teaching template. Okay, that's good. Yes. So the second question was about, <clears throat> I think, diabetes. A, a lady who is GDM or diabetic type two with macrosomic baby at thirty six weeks. Actually, the that was the uh, that was scenario where, where the examiner was sitting and uh, she waited a little longer, and she was very angry. And the she was waiting for the consultant, mm. and which is not available. <clears throat> uh, he was busy in some uh, emergencies, and uh, she was pregnant, thirty six weeks. Yeah. Ah, uh, and she came for the ultrasound, and she brought the ultrasound report which showing that the baby is four point five kg. That lady and, uh, was uh, primary or multi gravida? No, she was uh, para one, and she okay. had a previous baby four kg, and which she has history of shoulder dystrophy also. Okay. So you have to explore, yeah. But this patient now mild. Uh, I think it was mild shoulder dystrophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mild shoulder dystrophy. Managed well, and baby is okay. Okay, so it is mild. <clears throat> no so, more. But it was in the history. But it was not written in the scenario. Yeah, it was in yeah. the history you have to ask. Scenario yeah. was only para one, hmm. para one, thirty six weeks. Ultrasound report showing four point five kg baby, and hmm. now a D a D a D a D D M on his side. Okay, that was the scenario. There was polyhydramnios. Yes, and macrosomia four four point five. They so mentioned the baby was four point five kg. Okay. Yes, that was in the scenario. And you then explored all the history, like we we are taking the history. We explore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I took the small history, the like simple history, Yani. I did not go in too much detail of the blood group of transfusion. No, I just stuck hmm. to the point that that how was her. Uh, first of all, the importance is her previous obstetric history. Mm -hmm. How is the baby? 
Hmm. That was uh, what is the weight of the last baby, hmm. and whether she was having GDM that time, hmm. and hmm. after that, because this is also GDM on insulin. So in between, she is not diabetic. Hmm. Okay, and then the baby, how is the baby now doing now? Yeah, until thirty six okay. weeks, and, and then you was, start your yes. management from thirty six weeks onward. Because I yes. think thirty six yes. weeks yes. is the time and, where, where you have to decide the mode of delivery, yes. the place, and time. Of yes. So patient is, uh, uh, she was asking me that, uh, mm -hmm. doctor, I will, uh, I, first of all, we have to apologize that consultant is uh, not around. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so sorry you waited along mm -hmm. because the clinic is going a uh, little uh, busy. Mm -hmm. So she was angry. So you have to uh, cool her down mm -hmm. by your attitude or talking and apologizing. Then mm -hmm. I asked the permission that would I, would you like me to continue? Because consultant is not around. Hmm. And if you would like, I, I will continue. Otherwise, I will book your yes, appointment, appointment with mm -hmm. the consultant. But she said, no, you can continue, hmm. doctor. Then I apologize to, for the delay. Hmm. And we are working on it to not to happen it again. She said, yes. it's okay. Hmm. Then, uh, then I asked uh, her history, what is your concern? As hmm. I can see, you are for, for your ultrasound report to discuss. Then she hmm. said, I will. I will uh, let me give some time. I will uh, do control my blood sugars. I mm. said, uh, yeah, I can understand your concern. Mm. I, I never, uh, in, in any of my station, I never uh, deny course, what he's or, asking. Hmm. I say, yes, I understand your concern. Hmm. But in a situation where uh, your baby is already big, hmm. even if you control your blood sugar, but at this weight of the baby, we usually uh, uh, recommend delivery. And in a woman with a, with, uh, who is having a diabetes and uh, already on treatment insulin, and with mm. such uh, weight of the baby, usually we recommend cesarean section. Because mm. so then she was asking that, why we, I cannot deliver normally? I said, you already have a baby, uh, baby shoulder stuck previously. This hmm. time, and this time, another factor, your baby weight is on the higher side. So hmm. you're on the, on the high risk of your baby shoulder stuck that time. And the so, consequences. And the consequences. So hmm. a woman who is diabetes and with, the, with weight like 4.5 kg, the safest way to deliver the baby is by cesarean section. Hmm. But yeah. we, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, advising. I'm just, uh, this is the recommendation. I'm suggesting I'm giving you return. I just mm. told that I yeah, have it, to decide now. Yes, because you, this is the way uh, you leave on uh, it on the patient, yeah. but you are telling I'm, all the yeah. pros and cons, and then it's yeah. up to the patient to decide. Yeah, yeah. She can ask me because she is not previous. She can ask that uh, whether I, I cannot, uh, you cannot induce me. Yes, mm -hmm. we have to deliver. Uh, we cannot leave her like for, till 40 weeks. We mm -hmm. have to deliver such a woman around 37, 38 weeks. Mm -hmm. Diabetic woman on insulin, we are not uh, taking her till mm -hmm. uh, 40, 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I, I missed one point here. I think she was uh, want to listen from me that uh, with, with this good size baby with uncontrolled blood sugar, there is a small risk of sudden IFD. Oh, that yeah. point I did not mm. mention. The, maybe was, she was asking uh, why you are not taking yeah, yeah. me up to why 40 weeks. So they, because of the risk of IUFD, we are not exactly. taking you until 40 weeks. After finishing the human. exam, I realized hmm. that why she was asking me that let me control my blood sugar, let me give me time. So she wants to. Uh, uh, my like she wants to me to say this word, but I did not say it actually. Yeah, increased perinatal mortality. Yeah, no mm. so exam. So the, all the all the role players, all the <laughs> are they, actually they directing are you directing what they want to hear. You, yes. yes, that's true. So this so is you good. have to be very intelligent and mm -hmm. just think that why some uh, some someone uh, is insisting on uh, one thing. Yeah. <laughs> there must be something. <laughs> why the role player is asking some questions? So mm. just. Think about that. Yes, yeah. I also realized that they were like like directing me and asking me a question that that is written in their uh, what you call it. Uh, even though her 
even though her baby weight was 4.5 kg but i did not say that no you have to go for cesarean section i am admitting you this this, this. i just say we recommend cesarean section is the safest way hmm. and i am giving you appointment with my consultant yeah we should and never forget it decide, yeah yeah whatever you decide we will hmm. support you and we will respect your wish yeah but, but if you will tell her all the pros and cons then then you leave it on. yes okay so the third scenario was para one i think she was six to seven weeks pregnant and she was having mild bleeding pv and she has done the knee x-ray after she fell down and she wanted termination of pregnancy because she was afraid that there might be some abnormalities and due to x-ray yeah. Mm. yeah yeah she's she came and she said I am so afraid I have this uh, x-ray. So I just, uh, first thing I inform her that the amount of radiation that is done, it's very negligible. Mm -hmm. and the evidence shows that they, uh, they don't have uh, that much harm to the baby. And even your uh, x-ray is quite away from the tummy. It's mm -hmm. on the knee. Mm -hmm. and so, um, uh, I just reassure her and about the bleeding because ultrasound, everything was fine. There was fetal heart. So mm -hmm. I told her that this is, we call it threatened uh, miscarriage. Yeah. And whenever there is bleeding, there is a very small risk that you might uh, miscarry. But there is more chance, like more than 70% chance. So then the, she said, if anything happened to my baby because of the x-ray, then what is the means? I said, we we, uh, we will do the x-ray at around uh, 11, 12 weeks and uh, scan, uh, scan. And then we will do the normally scan. And then the normally scan. And then we will do the growth mm -hmm. scan. So in, mm -hmm. in all these scans, uh, we will uh, pick the major anomalies if anything happens because of the x-ray. That yes. is uh, very rare to happen. Yes. So I reassure her. And then uh, about the threatened abortion, I, I reassure her. Mm -hmm. And that's it. She needs this one. And I ask her to continue the folic acid. And then a booking appointment, I advise to book. That's it. I think if the, uh, if the lady is like six weeks, uh, she was more than six weeks, right? And if she has bleeding, so when you ask her to follow, to follow up? Actually, uh, Samira, I, I, that is a that, that she did the dating scan. It, we will advise her if she mm -hmm. has heavy bleeding, like she has to come to the uh, day. So you inform her about the red flag uh, the sign and symptoms. The red flag sign. Uh, yeah, if you have more pain, if you have, if you bleed, yes. Yeah, <coughs> we have to inform. We have to give you emergency number. If mm -hmm. you bleed heavily, you have to come to the emergency. Mm -hmm. Or if you feel pain. Or heavy bleeding, it means that you are going to miscarry. So, and hmm. you have to give an emergency contact number and all in such situation. Yeah. Otherwise, if all fine, you don't play, you don't, if this bleeding is stopped, your pregnancy will go on. Then at around 10, at 11, 11 plus 10, 11 weeks, <laughs> they, they do, they do, they do, there is a scan mm -hmm. and then follow up in the clinic. Okay, that's good. That's great. So, uh, another fourth. Para zero plus one, her B, uh, morbidly obese, 44 BMI, and she was a known case of PCO and secondary infertility. She want to know about the uh, ovulation induction, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, this the patient, she was very nice. <clears throat> she was a very nice, smiling, and mm -hmm. very smart girl, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, role player, Damana. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, uh, the scenario was written and it was uh, known PCO, regular uh, mm. cycles, and just want to know the ovulation induction regimen. Even though she was having 44 BMI and uh, she was having one miscarriage also because she was para zero plus one. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, she was keen to know the, how we do ovulation induction. So mm -hmm. I just uh, asked her what is PCO. Then I uh, mm -hmm. gave her a little idea of about polycyst, what is polycystic ovaries, what mm -hmm. happens in polycystic ovaries. So I, give, I asked her whether you are having any idea. She said, yes, but I would like to know what uh, if you tell me. 
So I give a, so a little brief uh, uh, definition of the polycystic ovaries, and then why the ovulation does not occur. So I give her. Then I give her the regimens of the Did you life. ask her that when she had her miscarriage? Yeah, I asked her about the miscarriage. It was it second was trimester miscarriage. Second trimester. Yeah, yeah, second trimester. Like she was six, seven weeks. Uh, six, seven. No, first trimester. Sorry. First, first trimester. trimester. Six, seven weeks. Uh, well, okay, weeks. early uh, miscarriage. Early miscarriage. Yeah. Which then I. Then I ask her, uh, I give mm -hmm. her all, all the regimen of ovulation induction agent mm -hmm. and how we do monitor and uh, what is our protocol, how, how we do this. So uh, you talked because, about PCO, you talked about obesity. I talked like about her know? concern first, yes. I mm -hmm. talked about PCO, I talked about her concern like ovulation induction. Mm -hmm. After that, I, uh, I come her uh, lifestyle management also. Mm -hmm. And then I asked that is the very important step first, what we recommend usually is to decrease weight. Yeah. To reduce weight. She was having any comorbidity? No, she don't have any comorbidity. But 44 is... Yes, the recommendation for bariatric surgery. Yes. Recommendation is after 40 years. So I, come, I came at the end that mm -hmm. I can see from your notes, your weight is on the higher side. And yeah. with that, <coughs> with this way, a woman who is having polycystic ovaries, we usually advise the first mm. strategy to decrease weight. Mm. And with the BMI of 44, usually the, we recommend to go for bariatric surgery mm -hmm. before going ahead for ovulation induction. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it will, it will not only improve your uh, conception chance of getting pregnant life birth rate, mm -hmm. yes pregnancy <clears throat> it will also decrease uh, some of the yeah some of the and congenital anomalies yes. yeah congenital anomalies hypertension and diabetes yes yes it all the macrosomia and all the problems yeah. all that can happen so to her, her and that. to the baby yes i told her that you might with this weight mm. you might there will be difficult to get pregnant. If you get yes. pregnant, there is increased chance of miscarriage. Hmm. There are increased chance of subnormalities in the babies. You are hmm. having at risk of hypertension, diabetes, during pregnancy, and even for your own health also. If you decrease hmm. the weight, you will decrease your chance of having diabetes in the future, hypertension, and cardiac hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. So I talk about as a general at the end for mm -hmm. this weight. Yeah. And she said, yes, 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 you are mm -hmm. right. Then I say, I'll be, I'm coming, I am connecting you and giving you appointment with the bariatric surgeon. And I'm giving mm -hmm. you written material about that. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can, this, you can read. And what, you can, what, what about her menstrual read. history? It was regular? <clears throat> I think uh, she was having delayed cycle, not that much. That she, Her concern was not the cycle. And that was some delay, but not that. I didn't talk about them. I, I, maybe I forget now. Uh, did you I talk did about the about... secondary, infer I mean, infertility? Uh, I mean, uh, to ask her that um, mm, other, other things about infertility. I asked about her husband. Yeah, infertility yes. is too hard. I asked her quite a <laughs> frequency. Mm -hmm. I asked her uh, alcohol, smoking. Yeah. I asked her uh, husband about husband, semen mm -hmm. analysis done or not done. Mm -hmm. Test is done or not done. Yeah, I this is what I wanted to know that did you talk about infertility in general? Yeah. I asked all the important points regarding infertility history. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I didn't ask unimportant things. I asked uh, when she said, yes, my TB test is done and that is normal. Mm -hmm. Then I did not ask that whether she's uh, suffered from uh, sexually she had infection and all. Yes, but if she, if her tube is patent, this is what we want. Yes, so uh, I just, for my exam, this was not that I was so clever, no. I just remembered some important points only. This is the thing, you know. Yeah, because of uh, practice. It will not come without practice, believe me. So, um, Sabiha, the fifth question is was about 19 years old, superficial dyspareunia, and I think vaginismus, and you need to counsel her, right? A young girl. 
actually this this was a very young uh, girl i think 19 years old and she was having one miscarriage 0 plus 1 okay. and she is married for 2 years and oh. she is having now she is she is married for 2 years 19 years yes. okay she was 19 years she was married for 2 years i think or 20 years but she was married and what mm -hmm. i remember she is having one miscarriage okay. you know this this is scenario uh her name is still i remember her name was neom okay okay and mm -hmm. she said she was a black girl actually mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she came and she was just a little shy girl like not very confidently talking hmm so uh, i asked her oh, what is your concern what can i help what can i do for you then she said i am having difficulty in uh intercourse and i have pain but and then i ask her whether it is super superficial yeah. or deep took her menstrual history then i took her uh, any sexually shared infection mm -hmm. then i ask her relationship with the husband how is her husband mm -hmm. with her. then i ask any any bad experiences in the life yani yeah you ask about all the causes of superficial and deep dyspareunia uh, she i think she was having deep dyspareunia too no she was having only superficial only superficial okay yeah. so all the causes of superficial dyspareunia mm -hmm. yeah. plus psychological and uh, yes then she refused for examination actually mm -hmm. she refused for examination and she was shy and i said okay then uh, after asking in so many question i just uh, then i said it looks like that you are suffering from a condition uh, we call it vaginismus so have you read about that then i told her about what is vaginismus i give the explanation what we read from the nhs website actually this is patient i learned from the nhs website hmm. vaginismus so i'll just uh, give this one and then i explain how we manage this one like mm -hmm. talking therapy and then all psychology uh, psychosexual counselors hmm. and then sometimes we give uh, lubricating gel then we have to involve the partner also all i talk about all the vaginismus the okay. the dilators dilate all all i i i hmm. talk to her i talk to her about all i think there is medication there also i think uh, amitriptyline or something i think i talk but i forget now i talk some medication also to just relax yeah as a all uh, and and relax and some yes and referral to the psychosexual counselors and psychologists maybe. ah with the partner yes the, i told the her partner. that i will refer you and then exercise also pelvic floor exercise is also mm -hmm. uh, i now now i forget many things you know we are yes, we are yes. champions of forgetting <laughs> but i did all the template of vaginismus that time yes from where you read yeah. vaginismus is it from the tog article this was i read it from nhs nhs website and it's a website. very good uh, yeah. the definition and the management then you have then this is patient actually then don't have too much knowledge this is patient just how you will talk to the patient yes yeah. counseling it was a uh, counseling. counseling station how you will manage hmm. how will manage how the patient you will talk to the patient that because she was shy and, and uh, yeah, don't be, because this uh, is you wanted to gain her confidence so she opened yes. up to you you open up so mm -hmm. so you have to talk that uh, this is not a big this is not something uh, like it's a big a big deal it happens yeah and so you are not the only one who have problem. this problem yeah. they are uh, i have seen many other uh, you know, girls, girls mm -hmm. sometimes yes after delivery they are having a genesis it's not that first time Hmm. like this person she's having one miscarriage and after that and now, then you, maybe you told her that uh, it, uh, there are many things that we can do about it yes so it is not something that is not treatable so you gained her okay. confidence yeah yeah i told her that don't worry and at the end i asked anything if you don't understand understand just let me let yes. me repeat because considering her uh, yes. age yeah yeah understanding understanding 
yes i am I, I think i because she was very quiet so i said anything you want me to repeat anything you don't understand what i'm trying to tell you or i am i am giving you appointment with my consultant or psychosexual counselor with your husband it's better if you bring your husband to so that he will understand and then we will and the patient information leaflets and all these things and yeah. what we will to involve your husband in your management mm mm-hmm. mhm it will it will give a good result yeah so um okay so you have another uh, i think uh, case which which is about down syndrome but let me just let me stop this meeting here because it will stop in 2 minutes and then i'll send you another link sorry for this it's okay no problem okay